At first glance, it looks like all of the other ancient looking houses in the old city of Jerusalem. But buried deep beneath the private home of Theo and Miriam Siebenberg is an archaeological gold mine. Miriam says it was her husband's determination that led to the discovery. My husband, Theo Siebenberg, and I came to the Jewish Quarter in 1970. We built a house of four floors on top of a hill. I'm standing almost uh, in the middle of the hill. And uh, when we finished building my, the house, my husband had the idea that he wanted to have the link with the past, with the Jews that lived here 2,000 years ago, and he wanted to dig. He talked to the archeologist. We told him, you know, that uh, they did proof digs here, but they didn't find anything. So it's a waste of time and money. Forget it, there's nothing here. But he insisted, and he didn't take uh, no for an answer, so he talked to the engineers. The engineers told him you're a little bit too late because not only your house will come falling down, but also all the houses in the back of the street will come sliding down because, so, because it's a big slope here. And then they came up with the idea after about eight months of putting up a retaining wall from street to street. This is the retaining wall from street to street, four and a half floors to bedrock. And once we agreed to do it, we could start doing the excavation. Archaeologists unearth rare finds dating back some 4,000 years, including this aqueduct that transported water from the city of Hebron to the Temple Mount, where official animal sacrifices were held during many of the festivals. And this aqueduct is probably uh, started from the time of the Maccabee uh, um, kings. And so we are standing here apparently in the Maccabee Palace. When I say that this is the Maccabee Palace, this is a very small place. The Maccabee Palace must have been a much bigger one, and it went all the way uh, through, I would say, at least a third of the Jewish quarter of today, but at that time it was called, as you know, the upper uh, city. So here we can touch history. These are the ashes of the big fire that occurred here on the 8th of the month of Elul, one year, uh, one month exactly after the destruction of the temple on Tisha B'Av, ninth of the month of Av. So here you have it. And here you have the layers of this big fire. We gave uh, this uh, ashes of this uh, uh, from here to a laboratory in South Africa for a uh, carbon 14. And they came up with the idea of uh, a the year uh, between 40 to 90, which we know, according to Josephus, that the temple was destroyed on Tisha B'Av and on 8th of the month of Elul, one month later, there was the destruction of the upper city, where we are here now in the upper city, which is the Jewish quarter of today. And I want to say that uh, they, uh, the Romans destroyed the temple and destroyed Jerusalem. But here we are back. And we are here, and the Romans are nowhere. And uh, so this is the continuity of Jewish life, that we live upstairs, as you could see, in the house, and as you could see from the roof. We look over the city of David, of King David, and we are here to stay forever. Today, the Siebenberg home is also a museum and includes other artifacts like an ancient lamp and this lady's ring. Miriam says the ring is proof that she isn't the only woman who has ever lived in the house. Proof to me, you know, the continuity that there was a woman that wore something like this. And here I am, you know, 2,000 or 3,000 years later, and I'm also wearing the same ring not the same exactly, but a replica of that ring that she wore. So in this place, it's like we were here and here we are again. When you come to Jerusalem, I would like you to come and visit the Siebenberg house and we will show you all the finds and the small artifacts and the key ring of the lady of the house and the, uh, the rest of what we found here and we'd love to have you.